Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? It's me, Ella, and I'm back. Um, I'm so sorry that I haven't posted any prophetic words or messages for the past few days. Um, yeah, I've been going through tremendous warfare and I also just haven't been feeling well, um, haven't had an appetite like I can't keep any food down and most food just makes me feel mm -hmm. nauseous. So I haven't really been eating well and um, yeah, I've just been feeling down and then also like my dreams and even the thoughts that have been planted in my mind have just been so crazy and it's all demonic. Um, but yeah, I am out of that out of that warfare now and I believe God is calling me to rest but even in my rest I still need to work for the kingdom okay so um yeah that's why I'm here guys God needs me to deliver this message for somebody um and you guys know the drill this is not for everyone or maybe it's not for everyone right now you know what season you are in and um, yeah, take this back to the Lord. This should just be confirmation of what he's been speaking to you. But if it does resonate with you, take it back to the Lord and um, ask him for more clarity, more wisdom and more insight regarding this thing that the Lord needs you to do. And um, yeah, please always test the spirit behind this prophetic message and every prophetic message that you hear. And test the spirit behind every prophetic voice that you listen to, including me. So, yeah, guys, let's get into it. Okay, the Lord, when he gave me the title of this word, he says, um, he told me that the title should be, you need to secure the bag. Okay, so <laughs> I've been seeing this phrase for some years now, and I knew more or less what it mean, what it meant. Um, but it always just seemed to have like a negative connotation to it because um, from what I was seeing and how people were using it, it was a term um, mainly based on like material, acquiring material things and usually in, you know, dubious ways or deceptive ways. So I was like, okay, God, what do you mean? buy secure the bag like do you need people to start a business <coughs> excuse me or to you know to start making money are you going to be blessing kingdom financiers in the season like give me give me more information okay spill the tea lord <laughs> so the lord had me look up the like the modern, you could say the urban dictionary definition, which is the definition that most people use uh, in this day. And the the definition is, um, okay, secure the bag means getting the money, uh, working hard to secure a financial reward, accomplishing the goal of receiving something of value, usually by deceptive means. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, I get it. I see, I understand. And then God wanted me to look up the, like the true meaning, the meaning that he's wanting to convey to you who this word is for. So according to God and what he's wanting you to do, secure the bag means accomplishing your goal, taking or obtaining advantage of a situation, playing your cards right to fulfill a goal or task, okay? So for who this word is for, there is something that the Lord has been unctioning you to do, and it's something that is quite scary. Um, you've almost been running away from it. <laughs> um, you will know um, what that thing is because the Lord is reminding you of that instruction that he gave you um, a while back. Okay, so you've been running away from this thing because it might, <clears throat> excuse me, put you in danger. It's going to put a target on your back. 
Um, you might even ruffle a few feathers. Like some people might be displeased with you upon learning that you have done this thing. And it's not an evil thing, um, not inherently evil, but because we live in an age where the devil is deceiving people and he's blinding them. Um, and even the Bible says like there'll come a time where good things are going to be called evil. Um, and yeah, because of this, this time that we live in, the people around you might see the thing that the Lord asked you to do as evil, but it is inherently good because it's an instruction from the Lord and um, the Lord wouldn't want you to do anything evil. This is going to be for a greater purpose. And um, at the end of this task or this assignment that the Lord is giving you, <clears throat> the Lord will restore it and turn it all around for your good and for his glory. Okay. So, yeah, God is saying that he needs you to do this thing. Okay. The scary, daunting task or assignment that you've been running away from, God is saying, stop running. You are being raised up for such a time as this. Okay. Now is the time for you to speak. Now is the time for you to reveal things. Now is the time for you to take action for the Lord. Okay, remember when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you fully submit to God, when you become a vessel for him, you're let, that's literally what you are. You are a vessel. You don't belong to yourself um, anymore. You've given yourself over to God and you want to be obedient because God is going to reward your obedience. Okay. So the Lord needs to act through you. Okay. As his servant, right? So yeah, stop running and don't panic as well. The Lord also wants you to know that he's going to work it all out for your good and you are going to be divinely protected. Um, the victory in the situation is guaranteed. Okay. Now the journey getting there, it might be, you know, full of ups and downs. There's no easy journey and it may take a while. And it's going to be a battle as well. But the Lord is saying that the victory is guaranteed. All he needs you to do is be obedient, do the thing, okay? Um, do the thing that he's asked you to do. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because there's, there's like a meme in South Africa of this girl who says, I did the things that made the pots to happen. Um, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, God needs you to do the things, okay? Do what he has instructed you to do. And then the scriptures that the Lord, um, led me to, uh, he gave me the, what is it? Sorry, I'm reading my notes here. Oh yeah. Genesis chapter 38, which is the story of Tamar and Judah. Now I personally love the story. <laughs> I think it's just so, um, so amazing and even though it was like really messy and um and scandalous actually it, yeah it was a very scandalous story but the lord just aligned everything and he gave Tamar um the boldness i suppose to take an action so that she could secure her bag okay and you know, in this prophetic message or in this context of what you are going through, securing the bag just basically means fulfilling God's will, okay? And being strategic about it, not deceptive, but strategic. And the Lord has given you strategy or he will be as soon as you like fully submit and consent to let, letting him use you as his vessel. He's going to give you strategy. So it's just about fulfilling God's will, just being obedient to him and um, letting him do what he needs to do through you. Okay. Because there's a certain goal. There's a certain assignment or task that needs to be fulfilled and you just need to secure the bag, accomplish that goal. OK, so in the story of Tamar and Judah, I think we all know the story. But if you don't just briefly. Um, so Tamar was married to one of Judah's sons and then 
um, the Lord saw that son as wicked. And so he killed the oldest son. And then because there was a law called, uh, I don't know, like levered marriage, basically. So if the first husband died, the wife, and they didn't have children, the wife would then be married to the brother. So as was the custom in the day, Judah gives Tamar to his second born son. And the second born son also did something very wicked in the sight of the Lord. Um, he robbed Tamar of the chance of securing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, her bag, which was securing an inheritance and a livelihood for herself. Okay. And so the Lord killed this brother, excuse me. And, um, Judah had a last born son, but at the time he was still too young to marry. And Judah says, okay, Tamar, um, go back to your father's house. And when my youngest son is old enough, I will give him to you to marry and you can come back and yeah, life will continue. So Judah had no intentions of doing this because he thought that Tamar was cursed um, because, you know, both of his sons died while they were married to him. And, um, it's just funny because <laughs> Judah didn't even think that maybe his sons were actually wicked. And that was the reason for their death, why the Lord took them away. But instead he places the blame on Tamar, but that's a story for another day. So, um, Eventually, Tamar goes home and then she hears word that Judah is in Timnah for the sheep um, sheep shearing festival or something. It was basically a celebration. And I think Judah's wife had passed away before he got to Timnah. So he was single and just drinking and he was merry. And Tamar decides, like, I'm not going to let this old man swindle me out of my blessing and my inheritance. So I'm going to take things into my own hands. Well, not, I guess it was into her own hands, but also into, you know, God's plan, you know, God getting justice for her and vindicating her. So she dresses up um, and conceals herself and stands in this, like the street and then um, Judah didn't recognize that it was his daughter-in-law. So he proposes or makes a deal with Tamar, thinking that she's a prostitute. And he's like, okay, let's spend the night together. And then Tamar's like, okay, how are you going to pay me? Because, yeah, you're like drunk and it's late. And um, I think uh, Judah said he'll pay her with a goat. But because it was nighttime, he didn't have the goat with him. So he's like, in the meantime, keep my rod and my, I think his ring and a scarlet, a scarlet rope, um, just as surety until I get you the goat as payment for the night that we spent together. So they spent the night together. And then Tamar leaves the, the next day and she's back to normal. She's in her morning clothes and um, Judah sends his friend back to the street or the place where he found her. And the friend asks, um, hey, have you seen the temple prostitute who was standing here? And the people are like, what are you talking about? Like, no, there's no temple prostitute here. Um, and he has the goat with him at this point. So yeah Judah wanted to conceal what he was doing by sending his friend <laughs> to pay for the goats uh, uh, to pay for the night that they spent together so anyway life goes on and then Judah hears word that Tamar is pregnant and um he still knows that like Tamar is supposed to be mourning because she just lost like both of her husbands and um because she, he thought that she was sleeping around, that she was guilty of adultery or prostitution. And so in his own self-righteousness, he just says, you know what, this is a, a big sin. You have caused dishonor on our family. You need to be stoned. 
Um, and so Tame was like, okay, it's fine. But the father of the, of the child that I'm conceiving is the man who these items belong to. And then she sends back the, the rod, the, the ring and that red, the red rope that he had given her in exchange or as surety for payment. And so those items were very specific. I believe the the rod or the staff was hand carved and it had signs that were pointing to the person's identity. So that stick um, or the staff that Judah gave Tamar, it would have been known that it was him. And remember guys, Judah, he was the brother of Joseph and the son of um, Jacob or Israel. So he came from a very affluent and powerful, well-known family. So yeah, it's revealed now that Judah is the father of these, the child. Well, they thought it was just the one at that point. Judah is the father of the child that Tamar is pregnant with. And I'm sure it caused quite a scandal because, <coughs> excuse me, Judah was Tamar's father-in-law, <coughs> excuse me, and it was just very scandalous and crazy. So anyway, Judah recognizes his own faults and his mistakes, and he says that Tamar is more righteous than he is because he failed to fulfill his promise to her to give his youngest son. And the Bible says as well in that passage that after this whole discovery was made, that Judah and Tamar never um, had intimacy with each other after that. So eventually Tamar gives birth to twins, two boys. Um, I think, I can't remember the names, but I know the one, the one, his name was Perez. And I think that's the one that Jesus Christ um, and King David came through. Yeah, you guys can read that chapter. It's Genesis chapter 38. But yeah, Tamar ended up securing the bag, okay? Um, she got her her inheritance. She got her children. Um, and she was able to be secure, like financially secure and, um, you know, just be able to live a life because if Tamar back in those days if a woman was widowed or she didn't have children she was basically destitute so we can see here that this was part of God's plan as messy and crazy as it was it was part of God's plan for Tamar's justice her vindication and to help her secure a bag secure a future and not be left destitute and lonely and poor in the streets okay so God was protecting Tamar um in this instance and then the other um scripture and I think this is the one that the Lord wants me to focus more on <laughs> um it's JL okay and her story is found in the book of Judges chapter 4 and 5 I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just a brief synopsis once again. <clears throat> Deborah was a judge in Israel, and at the time they were at war with King Jabin. Um, and then God commissioned Barak, one of the commanders of the Israelite army, to go and fight against King Jabin um, or Jabin. I don't know how to say it, guys. <laughs> but yeah, um, Barak, I don't know, maybe he was intimidated or he was scared. So he goes to Deborah. She was quite a powerful woman. Uh, she had a high position and God ordained her for that position. So he goes to her, he's like, um, I'll go to war, but only if you come with me. If you don't come with me, then I'm not going to go to war with King Jabin. Okay, so Deborah's like, okay, you've made your choice, but because you've chosen this course of action, the Lord is going to give the honor not to you, but to a woman. Okay, um, and when we read this, we would just assume that the woman that she's speaking of is her. But no, it turns out the honor 
belonged to a minor character in the Bible, and her name is Jael. She was the the wife of Heber the Kenite, um, and they had like a clan. Um, I think they descended from Moses's brother. My, no, Moses's brother-in-law. So there were quite some strong lineal ties to the Israelites, but there was still enmity between the two groups. So um, I'm just going to read Judges chapter 4, verse 16, okay? Um, and this is just basically what happened and why JL is such an important heroine and how she secured the bag, okay? So it says, uh, this is Judges chapter 4, verse 16 to 23, says Barak remember he's the leader of the the Israelite army uh, Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Harosheth Hagoyim and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword Sisera is the the commander of the 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 enemy army um he's basically alleged or he he has allegiance to King Jabin. Okay, so he's the, the leader of the enemy army. So yeah, also Sarah's troops fell by the sword, not a man was left. So Sarah, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the family of Heber the Kenites. <clears throat> Verse 18. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her tent and she covered him with a blanket. And guys, I just want to note here that Jael was actually um, in grave danger. Because back in those days, if a male visitor came to your home you could, um, you obviously would offer them hospitality and food and treat them well, but that male guest could also just take your, your wife or you could offer your daughters to that guest. Um, so because Cicera was a powerful man, JL was in danger of, you know, being sexually assaulted. Uh, you guys know the R word. And it could have turned very violent, okay? And he had just come from war. So he could have asked her to do anything and she would have had to um, to say yes. You know, she didn't have any power. But instead, she treats him with kindness and, you know, humility. And she says, come in. But let's wait and see what the real reason was, okay? So, yeah, he comes in and in verse 19... <clears throat> I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If anyone comes by and asks you, is anyone here? Say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the pig through his temple into the ground, and he died. Just then, Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent pig through his temple, dead. Verse 23, on that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. Sorry okay. about that, guys. Um, so sorry. sorry. Just had to clean my Many room. Pause, so yeah. I had to give her space for a few minutes, but she's done now. <clears throat> okay, so we can see here in... JL's um, story in Judges chapter 4 um, that she secured the bag okay remember Deborah had told Barak because he was um, 
fearful or intimidated or overwhelmed that because he has chosen to to do this commission that he was given by the Lord in the way that he did by asking a woman to come with him that the honor would be given to a woman and it wasn't the honor wasn't given to Deborah she wasn't the one who killed and defeated um Sisera and ultimately King Jabin but it was Jael you know she was just an unassuming woman just a woman in the desert um just tending to her tents and doing what she had to do while her husband was away and she was in grave danger because here came this powerful ruthless man <coughs> excuse me uh and her family was supposed to be um not aligned, but they had like an allegiance with the king of Canaan and Sisera as well. So she didn't have to kill um, the enemy of the Israelites. You know, she was supposed to show him loyalty. And in as much as she did show him hospitality and uh, bring him in and give him the milk. Well, he asked for water, I think. But um she gave him warm milk instead, you know, she did show him hospitality and kindness, but there was still an, a goal and uh, an, an assignment, a task that needed to be done. So Sarah still had to be defeated. He had to be killed. Okay. And that was what gave, um, the open doors so that the Israelites could pursue the king of their enemy of their enemy nation right um and that's when they were defeated and um yeah the lord gave the israelites rest for a few years there was peace okay so jl secured the bag right and she she did it so bravely and she was just so valiant and strong and she took a big risk okay so for some of you guys this thing that the lord is asking you to do that he's been asking you to do or that he will ask you to do is going to be a big risk okay but we know the God that we serve he took a risk on us he took a risk on humanity by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us and I'm sure it wasn't easy for Jesus Christ to also you know to say that prayer um father if this cup will not pass away from me unless I drink it then your will be done you know Jesus knew that he had to go through torture um through being mocked and scoffed and people not believing in him and he had to bear the pain the brunt um mm -hmm. and just the sin of humanity but he still did it anyway he was brave and he took a risk on us not knowing whether we would accept salvation through him or whether we would choose to be part of the world and <clears throat> the kingdom of darkness but he still took that risk and did it anyway so in the same way you need to take a risk and as scary as it is um, as daunting and terrifying as it will be maybe you're thinking about what you know what will people think about me what are they going to say don't mind that just secure the bag do what the lord has asked you to do and know that you are divinely protected and <clears throat> no arrow that flies by day or pestilence that comes at night will touch you okay god has his hand upon you there's a reason that he asked you specifically to do this thing at this time okay for such a time as this is the 414 okay there's a reason for that. So go ahead, be bold, be courageous, ask the Lord for strength, you know, ask him for wisdom and ask him for more strategy where you feel unsure. Um, the Lord is right there for all the answers. Okay. So go ahead and do this thing. And um, I just want to also add here the that JL was actually honored in the song of Deborah, which is in Judges chapter 5. And I'm just going to read verse, verse 24 <coughs> to 27. Sorry, guys, I'm feeling a bit um, 
fluey or congested so yeah please excuse all the clearing of my throat and sniffing and stuff okay so judges chapter 4 verse 24 to 27 it says, Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, most blessed of tent dwelling women. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curdled milk. Her hand reached for the tent peg, her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Sisera, she crushed his head, she shattered and pierced his temple. At her at her feet he sank, he fell, there he lay. At her feet he sank, he fell, where he sank, there he fell, dead. Okay, so this is Deborah, you know, one of the most powerful women in Israel. Um, and she assisted Barak, you know, in this, in this war, in this battle. And just as she had predicted or prophesied that the honor would be given to a woman. And here she is fulfilling um, the very words that she spoke in chapter four, honoring JL. You know, it's just a short passage of scripture. But look now, just by JL, you know, acting um, for on behalf of the Lord, even though the Lord wasn't mentioned there, but I believe that it was the working of the Lord, um, unctioning her and telling her to be brave and to to kill this uh, this commander of the enemy army. Just that one act, you know, and now she's pretty much immortalized through scriptures. I mean, we're reading about her like more than 2,000 years later, okay, and she's being honored, she's being praised for her bravery, for what she did, and just taking an action <clears throat> to smite the enemy, okay, so the Lord is saying here that even though this mission that you're going through is, is scary and he's asking you to do a really big thing um, and it's a big risk, but you will be honored, okay? People will honor you. They will praise you eventually, but we know that it's not really you that they're going to be honoring. They'll be honoring the Lord because the Lord is the one who is um, working through you and you have allowed yourself to be a vessel for the Lord. Okay. So always remember that it's not about you, but it's about what you're doing for God, what you're doing for Jesus Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to, to direct you, counsel you and lead you. Okay. And it's about what you're doing for the kingdom. Okay. So yeah, guys, that's just, um, one of the scriptures and then the last one of course um is Esther my girl Esther like I always claim Esther as my bestie <laughs> um I just love the the scripture um the book of Esther so much but yeah we know that she also secured the bag and it was also very messy back in her days um <clears throat> and although we tend to romanticize the the book of Esther, but the reality is that when Esther was orphaned, you know, she was just living her life. Um, and it's more than likely that <laughs> when King Xerxes wrote that um that edict or that command that went to all the provinces that he was looking for a wife, um, Esther was actually kidnapped she was taken away um without her will and without her consent and even when she was in the palace yes she received um beauty treatments and she was living a lavish life but she was also part of the king's harem okay um I guess in modern terms, you could say she was one of the king's concubines at that point. Um, and this was before he obviously favored her um, and eventually chose her to be uh, to be queen and replace Vashti. OK, but you can read the whole book of Esther for yourself and ask the Lord for more revelation. But Esther secured the bag because, yes, she did receive wealth. She was living lavishly um, and she was, 
you know, <laughs> the king's, the king's wife. She was in the the lap of luxury, okay, but she also had very hard risky decisions to take when Mordecai had told her about Haman's plot and plan to annihilate the Jews he said to her you know what Esther you've um you've risen to this position and if you don't take action now then <coughs> excuse me help for our people will come from somewhere else so who knows that you've risen to your position for such a time as this so do something Esther come on like take action your your people's lives are at risk and Esther called for a fast throughout the nation and she took a risk um the king hadn't seen anyone for quite a while um and she said you know what I'm gonna go in anyway and if I die I die like Esther was at risk um for death because she just went into the king uh to the king's room or courtyard without his permission or without him asking for her but she went anyway even though she knew she could be killed for disobeying the king's orders or disturbing him or just acting out of her own free will but she 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 knew that people's lives were at stake okay and ultimately she um she explained or told the king about the plot against the Jews and what Taman was was doing behind the scenes and the king was so infuriated and he had Haman killed on the very gallows that he had built for Mordecai and we know that the king honored Mordecai and there was a <clears throat> a an edict written that the Jews could go and annihilate their enemies okay and their enemies were of the the bloodline of Haman and there's a there's like a long historical enmity that happened between the Jews and um Haman's nation or Haman's bloodline like it's all throughout the Bible so through Esther's actions through Esther securing the bag and fulfilling the task that she was ordained